welcome to Classic Comedy of Old Time Radio. I'm your host, Ron Eckelbarger. I know you are so excited because you get to listen to Lucille Ball and Richard Denning in episode number 61 of My Favorite Husband, entitled Mother-in-Law Again. It originally aired on November 4th, 1949. Yes, it's the new Gay Family series starring Lucille Ball with Richard Dunning as Liz and George Cooper, two people who live together and like it. As we look in on Sheridan Falls and the Coopers, Liz is in the living room reading a magazine as Katie the maid dusts around the room. No April showers. Katie. Think I'm your way. Katie, has the mailman come yet? Yes, ma'am, he has. And gone away. <laughs> well, when you get through looking for the bluebird and listening for his song, will you bring it in to me? Whenever April showers come along. Yes, ma'am. Oh, sorry, I didn't mean to ruin your mood, Katie. Was it Mr. Negley, the mailman, who made you so gay? Yes. <laughs> we were playing post office. <laughs> Well, he ought to be pretty good at that. Oh, he's so imaginative. He told me my mouth was like a postage stamp. <laughs> he did? Yes, and then he canceled me. <laughs> Here's the mail. Let me see. Uh, a blotter from our insurance man, an ad, and... Uh, uh-oh. Here's trouble. Well, who's it from? The income tax collector? I wish it were. It's a letter to George from his mother. How can you tell? I just sent it. No one else addresses a letter to George Cooper only, marks personal all over, and then seals it with scotch tape. <laughs> My goodness, doesn't she ever write to both of you? Write to both of us? Huh? She won't even admit we're married. <laughs> oh, you don't mean that. She was at the wedding, wasn't she? Oh, she was there all right. I suspected it when someone tripped me going down the aisle. <laughs> And I was positive when she threw a fake heart attack that interrupted the ceremony. Oh, Mrs. Cooper. Honest. She flopped just before the preacher said white. For half an hour, George was pronounced man and is there a doctor in the house? <laughs> <laughs> well, if that's true or not, she's certainly used to the idea of your being married by now. You think so, huh? Then why were the towels she sent us last Christmas marked his and his? <laughs> I'd certainly give a lot to see what's in this letter. But it's addressed to George, and that's that. Mm-hmm. Can you see anything when you hold it up to the light like that? No, she cheats. She uses thick envelopes. <laughs> what a dirty trick. Wait a minute. If I crumple the flap a little, I can peek in this corner. Is that ethical? Certainly. If you don't steam it, tear it, or x-ray it, you can read whatever you can see. <laughs> that's the snooper's code. Oh, I didn't know. I can just barely see some of the writing. It says K E E P keep O U. Well, of all the nerves. <laughs> what does it say? It says keep out nosy. <laughs> you see what I mean, Katie? She doesn't trust me. Well, now, what are you going to do? Well, there's only one way left to find out what's in this letter. It's a desperate measure, but I'm afraid I'll have to resort to it. What? I'll wait till George comes home and let him open it. Hey, honey, I'm home. Oh, George, yeah, how, how are you, dear? Here's the mail. Well, don't I get a kiss? Oh, yeah, here. Here's the mail. <laughs> wait a minute. What kind of a kiss is that? Come here, wife. But, George... Mm. Now, where's the mail? What mail? <laughs> the mail you've been talking about ever since I came in the door. Oh. Oh, oh, here it is. A uh, blotter from the insurance company. Oh, that's an ad. Oh, well, here's a letter from Mother. Oh, really? Yeah. <laughs> didn't you notice? No, no, I saw the letter was addressed to you, so I didn't give it a second glance. Hmm. I wonder what Mother wrote to us about it. 
I didn't notice any us on it. Oh, you know she means it for both of us. Oh, sure. Now, let's see what she has to say. <laughs> Look at this under the flap. Keep out nosy. <laughs> she sure doesn't trust those mailmen. <laughs> No. <laughs> uh, dear Georgie, how's my little baby? <laughs> uh, mother still thinks of me as her baby. <laughs> goo goo. <laughs> how are you and what have you been doing lately? How's your golf game and how are things at the bank? I'm sending you some Argyle socks to go with your gray suit. Yeah, I suppose that's for both of us. <laughs> Liz. I'll wear one sock and you wear the other. <laughs> oh, now, Liz, she probably talks about you in a minute. Oh, sure, here. Um, uh, how's dear Liz? I'm always telling people what a wonderful person she is and how lucky you are to be married to her. Does it really say that? Let me see it. No, no, that's what she says. Now, now, let me finish the letter. Well, let me see that for myself. Liz, let let's that. go! There, now, let's see. Hmm, I thought so. Say hello to what's-her-name. <laughs> Liz, that's, uh, that's Mother's idea of a little joke. Oh, she's a real scream, isn't she? What other funny things does she have to say? Oh, look, she says, Now that Aunt Elva has gone east and lots of my old friends have moved away, I'm bored, and I'm planning to go somewhere where there'll be a little more excitement. Oh, George, your mother's going to join the Foreign Legion. <laughs> and so I've decided to come and live where I can be near you. I'm moving to Sheridan Falls. George, your wife's going to join the Foreign Legion. <laughs> well, Liz, I don't think that's a very nice attitude to take. Well, I was just joking, George. I, I think it's swell. <laughs> that's better. She says, could you please find me an apartment? I'll be there Friday. Regards to everyone. Oh, she mentioned me again. <laughs> well, now, let's see. We'll, uh, we'll have to find her a spot. Uh, where do you think would be a good place for Mother Liz? <laughs> you wouldn't want me to answer that. <laughs> now, Liz, be serious. Well, how about the Sheridan Arms? Well, but they're way over on the other side of town. Yeah. <laughs> I wonder if the Garden Court has a vacancy. George, that's only two blocks away. It's too close. Look, Liz, I've had enough of this. Mother's moving here, and I want you to be nice to her. Understand? I'll treat her the same way she treats me. What a nasty thing to say. <laughs> well, George, give me a farewell kiss. What do you mean? Are you going someplace? No, but your mother gets in tonight, and we haven't found her an apartment, so I don't think we're going to be alone very much from now on. Oh, you don't think she's going to stay here with us, do you? Oh, no. No, mother has too much pride for that. Uh, well, George, just in case mother's lost her pride, how should we spend our last few minutes together? Hmm? Come on, let's smooch. Smooch? <laughs> yeah. Let's stock up in case we have to ration our passion. <laughs> Okay, give me a kiss. Well, <laughs> oh, let's not ration that. Hold me tight, George. Okay. Tighter, tighter. Oh, but Liz! Go on, pretend you're a cyclotron and smash my atom. <laughs> Isn't anyone going to say hello? Oh. Well, look, honey, Mother's here. Oh. Hello, Mother. George, what a disgraceful exhibition. Well, since when is it disgraceful to kiss your own wife? Why? Oh, it is you. <laughs> yes, it's me. What's her name, Cooper? Oh, <laughs> oh, forgive me for not recognizing you, Elizabeth. I've never seen your hair these colors. <laughs> we started it, George. Now, 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 let's all calm down. Mother, uh, let me have your coat. <laughs> I didn't even hear you ring the bell. Oh, I didn't, dear. I kept my key from the last time I was here. <laughs> I knew I should have frisked her. <laughs> Liz, please. Uh, did you have a nice trip, Mother? Nice? Well, I'm here. I think my heart stood the trip pretty well. Oh, good. Uh, you look great. Well, you look, uh, 
All right, dear. A little thin, though. Have you been getting enough to eat, baby? <laughs> oh, sure. Uh, Liz looks after me. Well, you look a little peaked to me. Are you sure you're over that cold you had last month, baby? Oh, I'm fine. Well, I hope so, baby. <laughs> oh, good heavens. Come here, George. What for? I, I just remembered you had your breakfast an hour ago, and I haven't burped you yet. <laughs> Well, I certainly get the full import of that. Now, now, let's all relax. Yeah, sit down, Mother. Make yourself comfortable. Oh, no, no. I'm anxious to see where I'm going to live. So am I. Well, <laughs> let's go and take a look at the stuffy little cracker box you've rented for me. Uh, well, Mother, I've been meaning to tell you, uh, we haven't been able to find an apartment for you yet. Oh, well, then I guess I'll just have to go to a hotel until we find one. Yeah. Oh, uh, but Mother... Now, uh, son, you know I don't believe in barging in on my in-laws. I certainly respect my children's privacy. I'll just quietly go to a hotel for lonely old ladies. Well, uh, <laughs> Mother, uh, we have extra room here. Well, if you insist... <laughs> Lady in the guest room, Doctor. <laughs> well, then it's all settled, Mother. You're, you're going to stay with us. For a few days. Well, it would be more comfortable here. For a few days. Uh, we want you to feel that our home is your home. For a few days. <laughs> well, I'll stay. But remember, only for a few days. It sounds longer when she says it. <laughs> I think I'll go up to my room and lie down. <laughs> Travel is tiring, especially when you have a weak heart. I'll get it. Transfer company. Sign here, please. What for? Oh, George, look. Oh, here you are, mister. Thanks. What's the matter? So your mother didn't plan to stay here, huh? While she let you talk her into staying a few days, the moving van was unloading all her worldly goods on our front porch. <laughs> I don't understand Look, what... six suitcases, a trunk, an easy chair, a potted plant, a barrel of dishes, two crates of books, just enough for a few days. Well, uh, there must be some explanation. Oh, George, open those baby blue eyes of yours. She's landed. She's moved her supplies up and she's dug in for the winter. <laughs> now, Liz... You, you can throw away your calendar, George. From now on, every day is Mother's Day with us. <laughs> Well, George's mother stayed a few days, and then she stayed a few days, and then she stayed a few more days. Well, she's still there two weeks later, and Katie the maid has called Liz into the kitchen to make an important announcement. Mrs. Cooper, I quit. You can't quit, Katie. I haven't hired you back since you quit yesterday. Well, hire me back. Okay, you're hired. Good, I quit. What she done now? She changed everything in the kitchen around to make things more efficient. It just took me 45 minutes to find the stove. <laughs> Katie, I'm sorry. Please stick with me. I'll figure out how to fight this. Well, can't you just lay down the law? Uh-uh. She's too tricky. Every time I raise my voice, she puts her hand on her chest and says, Oh, my heart. <laughs> her heart, my foot. Uh, well, George believes her, so I'm dead. Anyway, Katie... At least you have some privacy. I never get to see George alone. Mrs. Cooper, you don't mean that... Oh, yes, I do mean. The three of us have been inseparable ever since she's been here. I'm beginning to feel like one of the Andrews sisters. <laughs> well, I guess I better go in and see how Patty and Laverne are getting along. <laughs> They're talking about George's childhood and a million people I never heard of. After that, he left town and no one seen him since. <laughs> oh, boy, I bet I missed a good one. <laughs> oh, Liz, honey, you're back. Yes, I thought I'd drop in and see what's old. Well, that was subtle. George, I think we're boring, Liz, with our talk of folks back home. Oh, no, no, go right ahead. It's fascinating. Well... After all, dear, these people are my oldest and dearest friends. Oh, George, 
speaking of your oldest and dearest friends, I saw Betty Jo Hansen just before I left town. No kidding. Betty Jo Hansen. A girl I used to know slightly, Liz. Slightly, he says. Oh, George. <laughs> now, there's a laugh that's chock full of nasty. <laughs> Who else have you seen, Mother? Uh, wait a minute. Let's go back to slightly, he says. Oh, Betty Joe, why, I haven't seen her in, uh, well, must be 12 years. Well, she's prettier than ever. Time hasn't changed her a bit. Oh, now, wait a minute. Twelve years and she hasn't changed a bit. Not a particle. Where does this kid live, in a bottle of alcohol? <laughs> Honey, I'm home. I'm in the kitchen. Well, what are you doing in here, Liz? You're cooking. I'm burning. Where's Katie? She quit. Your dear mother went into Katie's room when she was out and rearranged her furniture. Well, that's not so awful. George, people have habits, you know. Katie sat down where her chair used to be and almost broke her back. No. Yes, there was a tin wastebasket there instead. It took me half an hour to pull it off her. Well, it, it won't be for long. Mother's been out all day looking for an apartment. Ha! For your information, Mr. Gullible, she went to a movie instead. Liz, I, I saw her myself coming out of the Strand Theater. Well, that, that might have been a coincidence. Uh, maybe she was just walking by. All right, she was just walking by, eating popcorn and crying like a baby. <laughs> Look, Liz, if Mother said she was looking for an apartment, oh, she... There is out in the kitchen, Mother. Now, we'll find out about this right now. George, baby, I didn't know you were home. Hello, Mother. How'd the apartment hunting go today? Oh, so discouraging. I walked my feet off from one end of town to the other, and I couldn't find a thing. See, Liz? Well, I thought maybe you'd gone to a movie. A movie? Mm -hmm. Oh, my goodness, I don't have time for things like that. I have to find an apartment so I can stop imposing on you dear children. Well, if you were tired, you should have gone to a show. There's a good one at the Strand, Tokyo Joe, starring Clark Gable. Gable? Oh, no, it was Humphrey Bogart. I just saw it this after... <laughs> oh, dear. See, George? Mother, I thought you said you went looking for an apartment. Oh. What's the matter? My heart. <laughs> Shall I get a doctor, Mother? No. It was just a minor attack, dear. I'll, I'll go up and lie down. Don't bother about me. <laughs> well, George, are you satisfied? Oh, I, I know it sounds bad, Liz, but uh, she didn't really get a chance to answer. Oh, George, you make me so mad. Can't you see through her? She's camped here and she thinks she's got squatters right. Now, honey. And she'll be here forever. She can out squat anybody. <laughs> Now, Liz, now, now, don't lose your sense of humor. What sense of humor? We never see each other alone anymore. She makes Katie quit and she runs the house. She runs you and it's a big mess. Well, what do you expect me to do? I want you to go right in and tell your mother that she can't stay with us any longer. Well, I'll, I'll tell her tomorrow. That's just what I expected. Goodbye. Liz. Where are you going? I don't know, but I'm not coming back until your mother's out of this house. But Liz! Goodbye, baby. Another cup of tea, Mrs. Cooper. No, thank you, Mr. Wood. It was awfully nice of you to let me come over here now that I no longer have a home. <laughs> Well, now I understand about that mother-in-law business. <laughs> Why, Mrs. Wood's mother moved in with us right after we were married. But I got rid of her. You did? Eh, yes. She moved out right after the birth of our 11th child. <laughs> <laughs> Mr. Wood, is that the only cure? <laughs> Mr. Wood! 
Christmas wood. Oh, it's George. Quick, open the window. Mr. Wood, it lives at your house. Tell him I'm not here. Tell him I'm... Well, now that he's called, I can play hard to get. Tell him I'm not here. All right. Mrs. Cooper says to tell you she's not here. Oh. Tell her to come back. Tell him I'm not speaking to him till he sends his mother home. She's not speaking to you till you send your mother home. I'll send my mother home when she speaks to me. Now look, Mr. Cooper, send her home and you can get some rest. Send her home. He gives up. Will he send her home? Will you send her home? She's packing right now. She's packing right now. Oh, George, darling, you're wonderful. Mm. Please, Mrs. Cooper. <laughs> oh, I'm sorry, Mr. Wood. I'll be right over, sweetie pie. She'll be right over, sweetie pie. <laughs> George, is she really packing? How'd you ever get her to do it? I was just strong. I said, Mother, you'll have to leave. Oh, what did she say? Oh, she was as sweet as could be. Said she wouldn't come between us for the world and went right upstairs. Really? That doesn't sound right. Oh, you've misjudged her, Liz. See, there's her suitcase, all packed. Well, I'll just put it over here by the door so she won't have to waste any time looking for it. <laughs> now, here she comes. Now, be nice. Oh, I will. You don't know how good she looks to me now. Well, I guess I'm all ready, children. <laughs> Elizabeth, dear, I'm sorry you didn't tell me sooner that you felt I was in the... <gasps> oh, my heart. <laughs> there she blows. Oh. <laughs> oh, this is the worst. <laughs> oh, Mother. Mother, speak to me. Oh, Liz, she's unconscious. You're not going to fall for this again, are you? Oh, let's not be nasty at a time like this. Mother's unconscious. Uh, come on, help me carry her up to her room. Well, all right. Oh, George, look out. Oh, what's the matter? A mouse running across the floor right by your mother's head. A mouse. Oh! <laughs> wow, look at her go. Oh, mother. Oh, mother, what happened? Oh, oh my ankle. Oh, I think I broke my ankle. This means six weeks in bed. Oh, help me carry her upstairs, Liz. Oh, how did this happen, Mother? I tripped over my suitcase. Someone put it by the front door. Oh, no! George, George, wake up. What is it? What's the matter, Liz? Well, I'm not sure. What did you wake me up for? I was sound asleep. I know. I didn't like that smile you had on your face. What were you dreaming about? You really want to know, Liz? Yes. I was dreaming about the most beautiful creature in the world. Oh. Oh. Well, did she look like me? Very much. Did she have a figure like mine? Mm-hmm. Did she have eyes like mine? Exactly like yours. Oh, did she have red hair like mine? No, no, she didn't have any hair at all. <laughs> what? George, wasn't it me? No, it was a rainbow trout. Oh, fine. <laughs> Are you jealous, Liz? No, but if I ever find one scale on your lapel, I'll swim upstream to Mother. Now, good night, George. <laughs> favorite husband has been presented through the worldwide facilities of the United States Armed Forces Radio and Television Service.
Coalition Forces Network, Europe. Please send your questions and comments to host at classiccomedyotr.com. Come back next Monday for another episode of My Favorite Husband and check in on Wednesday for the next installment of The Pepsodent Show starring Bob Hope. Until Wednesday, in the words of Mark Twain, if you pick up a starving dog and make him prosperous, he will not bite you. That is the principal difference between a dog and a man.